I'm back, here to give you answers to questions you've never even thought about asking, such as, how do you beat General's GLA campaign using only voice commands? I won't be going over the voice commands too much this go around, if you want to learn more, you should watch my Chime video first. This run will be done on mostly hard. I found that missions 1 through 6 are possible on hard, but mission 7 is nearly impossible. I'll talk about that later. Just like the Chime video, I'll post each individual mission separately in case you want to see me flail around in real time. I'll also post the export XML for voice macro as well in case you want to try this out too. Without further ado, let's get started. Operation Black Rain is the first mission of the GLA campaign, the only mission to actually get a name. Like most other first missions, you start out with a fairly sizable force and have to take out an enemy outpost. The only difficulty in this segment is the three bomb trucks you start off with. Normally, a player would realize that putting units next to the bomb trucks is an awful idea. Unfortunately, I can't individually select them quickly. This is easily remedied by just moving all my units a safe distance to the left, and then guard moving the remaining enemy structures. Since the Technicals and Scorpion tanks have ranged attacks, they'll stay far enough away from the blast zone. The next phase of the mission gives us a small base and makes us destroy a dam to liberate a village downstream. Unlike China's first mission, this one is slightly more difficult. GLA units are not as tough as their counterparts in the other factions, relying instead on hidden run tactics and guerrilla engagements. Guess who can't do either? You know the cool tunnel network the GLA gets that can teleport their units around the map? I won't be using them, sadly. As you can imagine, trying to use brute force with a faction meant for subversive actions is tricky. Most engagements will often end with me suffering as much, if not more casualties, than my enemies. After grinding down the enemy and destroying the Chinese base at the bottom of the dam, I move my scorpions into position and target down the dam. You can go up and around the ridge, but honestly, there's no point. After a bit of waiting, I sacrifice my own men to finish the mission. Mission 2 requires you to steal UN foreign aid supplies. The objective itself is fairly straightforward. The game says you have to steal 40,000 in funds, but the only thing the game cares about is if you have 40,000 in the bank. This is actually a cool concept for a mission, since you have to balance how much you spend on army versus how much you have to save. Unfortunately, the mission itself can be a bit dull at times. To start off, the game gives me a barracks and a supply stash I cannot use, because they are both too far to the left. To ameliorate this, I have to build a second supply stash. I then build scorpion tanks, simply because I have found that technicals are far too fragile to take down the Humvees on their own, and I don't want the hassle of infantry transport. Ideally, you would wait until the convoys drop their supplies then raid them, but there's no way I can coordinate something that time sensitive. Instead, I just barrel down any convoy I can find, destroy it, then issue move commands around the crate until one of my units hopefully pats into it and picks it up. You can also destroy the buildings around the map to get more money, although it's a pittance compared to the convoys. At 20,000, the map expands, revealing a small US outpost. The supply convoys also stop and are replaced with cargo planes. This is a good thing, because you now get access to the workhorse of the GLA, quad cannons. I tried attacking the US outpost, since you can actually get some supplies from it, that failed miserably, and sent me back financially. I then raided the various villages for supplies while waiting for supply planes to shoot down. This is where the mission can get boring. Ideally, you wait for a supply plane to drop their supplies, then shoot them down while preventing civilians from stealing your loot. I cannot do any of that, so it's a waiting game for me. At 30,000, the map expands again and the US sends a sizable force to build a base and attack you. So, we should attack them first. But only after they start building a base, because their buildings also drop crates. Assuming no further setbacks, raiding the base should give you enough supplies to finish the mission. Mission 3 is effectively Mission 2, Part 2. You once again have to accrue 40,000 funds to win. Unlike the last mission, most of your money this time around will come from looting buildings. It also introduces the Angry Mob, one of GLA's iconic units. Unlike other infantry, there are multiple entities in each unit, effectively giving it regenerating health. They also have that one upgrade that gives them AK-47s. The enemies send very few attack waves against you, and the ones they do send are usually mulched by your starting mobs. It was on this mission that I hit a major speed bump with voice commands. For whatever reason, cycling workers cycles through all workers. This includes workers that are gathering supplies. In other words, if I want to build something, it's going to take significantly longer, as I have to go through all my workers to find an idle one. It's not too bad on this mission, since there's not much building you have to do, but it gets worse on the later missions. The mission design itself is actually fairly intricate. The US airdrops reinforcements to attack you until you take down the airport. After that, the Chinese are scripted to send dragon tanks after you once the US withdraw, and they even have a base you can take out. There's even a win condition for destroying both enemy factions. 
Sadly, now this is required by the mission, and odds are most players will seldom drag the game on long enough to reach that point. The buildings in the town provide enough money and are large enough that even I can target them. Honestly, Mission 2 and 3 probably should have been combined, since there's not really much to say here that wouldn't have been applied to Mission 2 as well. Mission 4 is the first conventional mission after the last two. You are tasked with destroying a US airbase in Turkey. The US routinely send raptors and occasionally stealth fighters your way, but both can be easily countered with stinger sights and quad cannons. This is something the game incessantly reminds you of. Every once in a while, the USA will also send small armor squads your way, but you'll probably be able to deal with them easily by the time they arrive. The major difficulty at the start of this mission is in building. You start off on a mountain ridge, which is terrible for building things. Since I can't rotate or fine-tune my placement, space is at a premium. I opt to avoid building more than one or two stinger sites and start massing quad cannons. Unfortunately, I don't have access to AP bullets yet, but a mass quad cannon will make a decent front line. We also get access to rocket buggies, a fast-moving artillery unit. Enjoy watching me lose them by the dozen, because I can't micro them away like you're supposed to. The airbase itself is decently defended, with the perimeter being lined with Patriot missile batteries. The US also tried to airstrike my quad cannons, a grave mistake. I then guard move my way through the base and destroy every enemy structure. Completing the mission. Short and simple. Mission 5 is probably one of the funner missions in this campaign. You have two objectives in this one. Capture four toxic bunkers and wipe out all US forces on the map. You get access to most of your tech tree for this mission, including the black market. Meanwhile, the AI is scripted to be fairly responsive to your actions as well, researching a myriad of upgrades and tailoring squads depending on your playstyle. Too bad the snare GLA comp of Quad Buggy is enough to kick their asses. I choose to sequence break a bit and rush the enemy base first. It's heavily fortified and can only be accessed via bridges to the north and south. The north bridge is slightly harder, but also closer to the core of the base. Before attacking, I research a couple of things from the black market. Just the standard upgrades, really. Things like junk repair, buggy ammo, and AP bullets. With these purchased, I guard move my rocket buggies to destroy the enemy defenses, while my quad cannons rip through the base defenders. Attacking the base causes most enemies on the map to converge on my forces, so I was on a time limit. I focus on destroying every production structure and dozer I could find, effectively hamstringing any future response. Remember the thing I said about the enemy tailoring their response to your playstyle? Yeah, they won't have a chance to do that. I lose my initial force to the reinforcements, but the damage was already done. Without dozers, airfields, war factories, the enemy could only send a small trickle of infantry my way. With the base dealt with, I start training rebels to capture the bunkers while using a new squad of quad cannons to clean up any remaining stragglers. After a brief moment of struggling to actually select the rebels, I start capturing the bunkers and hunt down whatever remains. It turns out I wasn't as thorough as I initially thought and left the barracks intact. And then the mission continued. The victory condition stipulates that you need to destroy every single unit, as is CNC tradition. A single Pathfinder was still alive. Thankfully, the quad cans are fairly responsive, so he was taken care of swiftly. And with that, mission accomplished. Mission 6 is once again another gimmick mission. Although this one was significantly less frustrating than its Chinese counterpart. You are tasked with hunting down a rogue GLA cell, and are given three new trucks to play with. In 10 minutes, Chinese reinforcements will arrive. It's completely possible to beat the mission before that happens. In fact, the only time I've ever seen the Chinese reinforcements was when I was deliberately waiting for them. I used my large initial starting force to establish a foothold outside their base and start massing scorpions to deal with their vehicles and buildings. Now here comes the part that you are all probably thinking about. How do you select the nuke trucks? Not easily, I'll tell you that much. Initially, I tried just cycling through all my units, and then I realized that would take far too long and that my voice would be gone by the time I actually managed to get to the trucks. So I had to resort to the old-fashioned way of moving the units and cursor around until hopefully they both align. Shockingly, I got very lucky and managed to do so without major difficulty. I then got lucky again when moving them into the enemy base and they dispersed themselves fairly well. The enemy don't fire on the nuke trucks under most circumstances. Plot-wise, it's because the enemy still think they're operated by the Chinese and whatnot, but trigger-wise, it's actually a bit more interesting. There are a bunch of no-go zones to the left and right of the front entrance. There are also no-go zones in the back of the enemy base and the northwest portion of the map. If the player brings the trucks to any of these locations, the enemy will attack them. The enemy will also attack the trucks if they are brought through the front door with at least one other unit. Overall, a very complex set of rules for actions that most players won't even think about. Once I amass a decent group of scorpions, I detonate the nukes and assault the enemy base. Just like the last mission, moving into the enemy base causes every unit on the map to start converging on your position. I lost quite a fair deal of units to the initial enemy patrols, but managed to scrape by with just a few scorpions. If they were more fragile units like buggies or quad cans, odds are I wouldn't have succeeded. 
After clearing out the base, I focused down the enemy production structures again. For whatever reason, the enemy is scripted to sell all their structures after losing every production structure. This is incredibly stupid for them, because the mission is considered over once all enemy structures are destroyed. So, with the enemy self-sabotaging, I finished the mission. Mission 7 is actually a fun and very challenging mission if you are playing the game normally. You have to capture two structures on the opposite side of the map. They are guarded by a Chinese base to the north, and an American base to the east. Both of these enemies will send everything they have against you. The Americans will eventually have access to fully upgraded Paladin tanks, Tomahawks, and Aurora Bombers. Meanwhile, the Chinese will eventually start sending Overlords and new cans your way. To top it all off, both sides have access to their super weapons and general powers, which they will use to devastating effect but only in your start position. They aren't scripted to use it outside of there. Unfortunately, this is where my run hard died. Simply put, the combined pressure of everything I stated above was too much. I simply could not issue the complex commands fast enough to put out every fire. If I was focusing on a Chinese attack wave, the Americans would send Aurora bombers to mince whatever troops I was massing. If I was focusing on the Americans, the Chinese would nuke me and then send an attack team to mop up the survivors. Early game, a rush using the general powers might be enough to knock one of them out, but I couldn't use general powers. Late game, the attack waves do peer out after an hour or so of playing, but I highly doubt I would be able to survive that long. So, since I'm not that insane, I chose to take the sensible option and lower the difficulty. Oh, did I say lower the difficulty? You can't actually do that that easily. The difficulty is set once you begin the campaign, so I would have to play through the entire campaign on normal. Thankfully, I had some test saves lying around. This is where I got disappointed, both at myself and at the mission design. The mission alone was already a fairly steep difficulty spike compared to the previous missions of the campaign, so I was hoping that even on an easier difficulty, it might retain at least some of that. Unfortunately, the AI become downright pacifist on normal. If you look at the attack wave times, the interval for rebuilding go from a minute and a half on hard to five minutes on normal. They aren't even allowed to use most of their general powers, and I've never seen them use their super weapons on normal. It's crazy. The US base is normally a daunting stronghold, guarded by bunkers, missile batteries, paladins, and Comanches, but that goes down fairly easily. They don't even replace any of their tougher units. You don't even have any incentive to go after the Chinese base. Their attack weights are laughable, and the banks that normally guard the second objective are never replaced. I once again had to go through the hassle of having to select my rebels in order to capture stuff, but that wasn't too bad. I finished the mission and subsequently the campaign. Overall, I wish that the gap between normal and hard were less drastic, but it is what it is. And that's the GLA campaign done. As always, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm still new to this, but it's been a fun project to work on. I wish it ended on a more climactic note, like the Chinese campaign, but there is unfortunately a very low skill ceiling using voice commands. I did find it easier to brute force with the GLA compared to China for some reason. I might revisit the last mission again at some point, simply because I'm still tilted by it, but that's something for another time. And if any of you maniacs manages to do it, feel free to send it my way. I'm also streaming practice runs on my Twitch, although sometimes I'll use them as footage if I feel they're good enough, so you can catch an early glimpse of that. I'm planning to do a goofy run in Red Alert 2 after this, but I want to get the US video out sometime near July 4th, so that'll have to wait. Well, coming next time, maybe I'll give you an air show.